who have no shame and they're passing by and thinking that thing. And he, what he does, because he had a long kurta, like a jubba kind of, and, and he lifted the up and covered his eyes. But as he lifted the up and covered his eyes, they all laughed and they said, oh, you know, little boy, they, they said, you covered your eyes, but what have you done about your satan? Yeah, that your satan is disclosed. And look at the answer this uh, Allah Hazrat radiallahu anh, says to them. They said, well, young man, you covered your eyes, but allowed your satan to be shown. And Allah Hazrat, still covering his face and eyes, still covered, the young Allah Hazrat replied, when the eyes are tempted, then the heart becomes tempted. When the heart is tempted, then the concealed parts become tempted. SubhanAllah, they were so shocked and affected with this, women hearing this with such a reply that some of them lost consciousness. Uh, so they are saying mm -hmm. that, you know, this so, you know, child, you cover the eyes, what about your sister? Well, as we all know, if you, our eyes are the first place which we have to look down, you know, sure. The man is giving the order first to look away. Don't look at the woman. Yeah, that lower your gazes. Yeah, that's the order first. That's the first part of that is from the man. Then the women do the part of that. So basically, here he said, if my eyes are not looking upon you, then it won't affect my sister. It won't affect my heart. So that's a deep kind of thinking for a four year old to say. Another incident in the month of Ramadan happened where Allah Hazrat Allah was about six years old and it was intense heat in the area where they lived and everyone knows that the heat in India at that time the average temperature of the summer days rise approximately 50 Celsius. Today you can see we go to 35 and we won't hear the UK, we have facilities, we have everything. But we complain and we cry because we can't fast. This is a child of six fasting. So, Allah Naki Adiham, Rahmullah, his blessed father, felt obviously sorry for his young son, who's only six years old, who doesn't have to fast because the Sharia has not upon him. But, so he took his son into the room. And he said, oh, son, the fasting of children is always like this, that you can break, you can open it. You know, like we say to our children, young children, practice So basically, so their blessed father said, oh, you can have this little bit sweet, have some to eat, and you can still fast. And uh, no one's looking. Now look at the what Allah Hazrat replies. Upon hearing this, the young Allah Hazrat, with the most respect, respectfully said, "Through those whose command I am fasting, He is seeing me. Other people that might not be looking upon me, through whose command I am fasting, He is seeing me." On hearing this answer from the child, tears began to flow from the other eyes of Hazrat Allah Nafi Ali Khan radiallahu an. He then left the room with Allah Hazrat radiallahu an. Allah Hazrat first lecture was at the age of six years old. Can you believe six years old? It was the glorious month of Rabbi Lawal, and Allah Hazrat stood up. Allah Hazrat stood. Allah has stood. We're going to finish with this, inshallah, because obviously Maghrib is near, and we'll pray our Maghrib after uh, with them because we pray at home, uh, just to let everyone know. Others, those who are listening, because after this, we're going to conclude with dua. Uh, please go and pray your namaz if you have not, or do your jamaat at home. But anyway, let's move a little bit forward. The people listening, were solely impressed by the maturity and excellence of this lecture, which was delivered on the 
topic of Malay Maulidun Nabi sallallahu ta'ala wa sallam at the age of six year old. And he spoke for two hours. We need, you know, a lot of preparations because we're not scholars and even scholars prepare and they take their time and, you know, but one hour, one hour, one and a half hour, two, three hours is, a, you know, it's a quite a long lecture for somebody to deliver, and especially a six-year-old child. So, Allah Hazrat's services, because I'm going to move on, because that's Allah Hazrat's childhood. As it's, uh, uh, so you can see a child who is born, uh, born wali, and that mother, that Oliya, uh, one. They are known as Madar Zad because they are born like Allah. They are Imam. Uh, also, Hazrat Hosi Azam radiallahu anhu. And you can see when he used to uh, fast when he was a baby, they knew that it was the Ramadan has started. And when he didn't fast, that means they knew the Ramadan has ended. So he was also a Madar Zad wali. And many have come, and many are. They are born wali just like many are born, uh, just like all Nabis are and Rasuls are born prophets. It's only when Allah tells them to announce. But same here, the wali Allah, many are Madar Zad. Some later on they repent and then they turn to Allah with such sincerity, Allah makes them wali Allah. Okay, so now here is some of the works. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, blessed karam upon Imam Ahmad Raza Khan by the wasila of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he was master of 50 branches of knowledge. Translation and commentary of the Holy Quran. Authority in the field of hadith. A great jurist of his time, Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, for his knowledge of philosophy and science, knowledge of astronomy, astrology, mathematical genius, contribution to the field of poetry. So the list goes on and on. Uh, uh, in the old, uh, discovered that he's, is it possible today to find an Islamic scholar or even a non Muslim professor, scientist, uh, 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 or a Nobel Prize owner? possessed such qualification. So Allah bestowed this knowledge upon them from war that our Arab scholars scholars like Sheikh Ismail bin Khalil and Sheikh Musa Ali uh, Shami radiallahu an commended Allah Hazrat radiallahu an as a revivalist and I said earlier the Mojaddid of the 14th century. If he's called the revivalist of this century it would be true and right. So that has carried on this present day as well. So I think I would request people to, because like I said earlier, that in 10 minutes to cover Allah Hazrat Ali Rahman would be impossible. To cover a, one, a local Imam, the knowledge of our no, local Imam who have learned the books of Allah Hazrat are immense. Just the tafsir of the Quran, the translation of the Quran, he will take uh, programs after programs for the show to cover. But the maqsad of this program was to emphasize the need to connect to these Oliya Allah who translated, who uh, brought the translation of the Quran to us to our, on our place who gave the deen on our place. And then if we just, uh, I mean, first and foremost, you will not be able to forget them because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep them alive because they are the one who Allah says, that they are successful. So they don't need us to remember them. By us remembering them, we will get their intercession. We will get their du'as. And through that, Allah will forgive us as well, inshallah. And that's the maqsad of this short program. And you, uh, mashallah, heard the poetry of Al-Imam Ahmad al-Zakhar, full of ish of the Prophet, 
And before we finish, I just want to uh, read this. Uh, and his blessed de death was had took place on the 25th of Safar, 1340. And that was 104 uh, years ago. So basically, now you've got to understand this, that some people think, why is it that we remember these blessed people at the time of, uh, you know, and we say Urs. Urs means celebration. Urs means Shadi. Urs is a Persian word, means Shadi. Shadi means happiness. Why is it that we are happy at the time of 